Good evening, it's 8 o'clock. The top headlines tonight. The story we are keeping our eye on. What actually happened in Morbi? It's nothing short of murders with rusted wires, unqualified contractors and worse. This is what the police report actually said. Bridge parts were not repaired, just repainted. Here are the shocking details as NDTV exclusive of what the police told the court. Pilots, fresh pitch to be Rajasthan Chief Minister, says don't take the Prime Minister's praise of Gelot lightly. See what happened with Azad. Take action against those who defied the leadership. The new Congress President's first test with such an outburst. Delhi pollution worsens as farm fires rise. Shut Delhi schools. A fresh BGP versus AAP battle. But meanwhile, the Delhi Chief Minister says it's not about Punjab, but North India says the Prime Minister should call a meeting of all North Indian states on air pollution. Chennai rain, a surplus of 445% in the last 24 hours, an 809% surplus in Kanchipuram. The Chief Minister says Chennai waterlogging is better this year. A key RBI meeting on inflation tomorrow. The RBI governor says today they're keeping an Arjuna eye on inflation. EdTech giant Baiju's reverses decision on layoffs in Kerala. The state intervenes. Baiju's gives in. That plan to shut the Tiruvananthapuram centre. 140 jobs were at stake. The Himachal Chief Minister to NDTV on BGP's rebels' problems saying they won't impact us. Prime Minister Modi's our face. Rebels can't compete. Former Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu is set for a dramatic return to power. Exit polls show he's ahead but needs the support of a far-right leader. A giant in women's rights, Seva founder Ila Bhatt dies, a gentle revolutionary who changed lives of lakhs of women, tributes foreign. Our lead story tonight, it's a story that we are keeping our focus on in NDTV because 135 lives have been lost. It's a tragedy, but it's not an accident. These are really virtual murders. Look at what the lapses were, what the police in Gujarat have told the court. Yet so far, the Reva bosses first know action. Lapse number one, the police say the contractors who renovated this bridge were not qualified for some wo such work. Lapse number two, they were unqualified, yet the same firm, Oreva, which makes watches, was given the contract in 2007 and in 2022, just a few months ago. Lapse number three, the cable of the suspension bridge was completely rusted. In fact, in lapse number four, the cable was rusted and that's exactly where it broke. So if just that rusted cable had been fixed, you wouldn't have lost those lives. As the police said, the incident would not have happened had the cable been repaired. And they also added that only the platform was changed, not the suspension cable. So if you haven't repaired the cables, that platform, even if it's new, can collapse. The police also said that the bridge was opened without determining the permissible cap capacity of people on that bridge and the bridge was opened without government approval. There was also lapse number nine, no life-saving equipment or lifeguards deployed and no documentation of repair work. I mean, Ankit, this really is a charge sheet which implies that 135 lives went because of the most basic issues. How could it be that such basic things were overlooked, yet the big bosses of Oreva are not named in the FIR and neither are anybody from the municipal corporation or the people who cleared this contract? Absolutely, and it is a story, uh, trad and a very, very sad and tragic story of greed and also of uh, negligence, criminal negligence that cost 135 lives and devastated so many families. Uh, Sonia, while you were reading those lapses, and uh, this is something that we have been reporting here at NDTV, uh, that the wires were rusted. People have been hearing about it. Let me, for the first time, show them what it actually translates into. Right now, I am uh, near of what 
once was the very famous hanging bridge of morbi these are the mangled remain the debris the scrap of uh, what was till sunday evening one of the most iconic spot one of the most iconic spot in the city and uh, while you were saying that the uh, wires were rusted let me show you live what the situation is this is the main suspension wire wires two wires like this were the ones on which this entire bridge was hanging and i'll ask uh, uh, pavan he will show you uh, this if you come close you'll see the entire wire is absolutely rusted every every you know nut bolt on this wire everything here you can't open them you can't touch them because the, everything is rusted uh, i'll give you for our viewers you know this is uh, uh, the the condition of the suspenders so this is the main wire these are the suspenders they are also under massive rust now take a look at this this is uh, you know white handkerchief if i just run this here this is this was the condition of the wire which was supporting uh, so many people that day 500 of them and uh, you know you can understand how it gave way the 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 load on the wire was such that such massive wire look at the threads it came out the threads came out as if it was a jute or a plastic wire which could not sustain the weight of more than 500 people and this is surprising because uh, like you said there was no weight suspension no uh, you know checks were done that how many people can go on it uh, the only change that was made were these aluminum sheets uh, earlier they were the this is these are the sheets on which people used to walk these sheets were replaced from wood uh, to aluminum and even in this how they have cut corners is just a baffling uh, this is one of the sheet and look at it between the sheets you will see a plastic mesh uh, this is not like uh, you know a solid strong aluminum sheet there are plastic mesh on it it was supported by these beams which were put on this wire and the claim was that this is going to sustain the uh, bridge for a long long time to come this did not happen uh the, uh you know i spoke to a few people earlier they were telling me that even at the uh, time before oreva took it over only 100 people were allowed on one side they used to send 100 people when they will cross the bridge and go to the other side 100 from that side would be in fact sent in it was sheer greed on the part of oreva company which gave this contract to uh to day prakash solutions which had zero experience uh, of this kind of work Uh, and they wanted to in fact cash in on the period of this holiday which was coming in gujarat the new year uh, in gujarat and they just threw it open without any clearances any testing nothing was done and on the part of the morbi municipal corporation which is now saying well we did not know it's a part of criminal negligence they knew since 2007 they have been in business with oreva which is not employing people with technical know how this resulted in 135 deaths and many families completely devastated right uh, it really is shocking ankit to see as they, you've shown us those rusted wires on television it really is horrific to think of rusted wires is what has killed 135 people and what is india's worst bridge tragedy in decades so we hope that is action taken not against the security guards and ticket collectors because they're not the men responsible for cutting corners here it's about those who actually cleared that contract without checking without doing the due diligence and those who carried out the renovation work when they knew that these lapses could actually kill people thanks ankit uh, for that update let's go across now to the other big developing story and that's in the congress where congress leader sachin pilot has made a fresh pitch to be rajasthan's chief minister hitting out at a function yesterday where the prime minister and ashok gelot the chief minister shared stage saying that the prime minister's praise of mr gelot shouldn't be taken lightly see what happened with gulam nabi azad after the prime minister praised him in parliament मुख्यमंत्री के नाते अशोक जी और हम साथ साथ काम करते रहे और अशोक जी हमारी जो मुख्यमंत्रियों की जमात थी उसमें सबसे सीनियर थे सबसे सीनियर मुख्यमंत्रियों में है और अभी भी हम जो मंच पे बैठे हैं उसमें भी अशोक जी सीनियर मुख्यमंत्रियों में से एक है तो उनका यहाँ आना इस कार्यक्रम में उपस्थित रहना और प्रधानमंत्री जी ने कल जो बयान दिए जो बढ़ाइयाँ करी मैं समझता हूँ बड़ा दिलचस्प एक घटनाक्रम है क्योंकि इसी प्रकार प्रधानमंत्री जी ने सदन के अंदर गुलाम नबी आजाद साहब की बढ़ाइयाँ करी थी और उसके बाद क्या घटनाक्रम पैदा हुआ हम सब ने देखा है तो बड़ा इंटरेस्टिंग डेवलपमेंट था कल का जो 
प्रधानमंत्री जी ने स्वतः ही बढ़ाइयाँ करी हैं इसको बड़ा मैं इंटरेस्टिंग मानता हूँ और इतना लाइटली नहीं रहना चाहिए रणवीर हमारे महामंत्री है उन्होंने कहा भी आप बयानबाजी कोई नहीं करेंगे तो हम तो डिसिप्लिन के बाद चाहते हैं कि सब लोग करें अभी हमारे सामने एक ही मकसद होना चाहिए So political trouble move, uh, brewing there, but meanwhile let's go across to Himachal Pradesh where the campaign is on. And NTV Arup Shukla spoke to the Himachal Chief Minister. Now the BJP is facing problems with rebels, with many contesting as independents. But Jairam Thakur says he's not worried about it. <laughs> इस बार जब हम यहाँ पर आए लोगों से बात कर रहे हैं या फिर जो आ, जो हम लोग रिसर्च कर रहे हैं नेताओं से बात कर रहे हैं बीजेपी के लिए एक थोड़ी सी एक समस्या कह सकते हैं और एक जर्नलिस्टिक सवाल है सर रेबल फैक्टर आपके तमाम नेता बागी हो गए आपने 11 मौजूदा विधायकों के टिकट काट दिए जिसमें से एक मंत्री शामिल है कुछ को तो आपने मना लिया लेकिन दो मौजूदा विधायक आपके चुनाव लड़ रहे हैं कुछ पूर्व विधायक चुनाव लड़ रहे हैं तमाम बीजेपी के नेता बागी होकर के इंडिपेंडेंट चुनाव लड़ रहे हैं उसका कितना असर देखते हैं इस इन फाइटिंग का कितना असर देखते हैं कुछ को मनाया कुछ नहीं माने देखिए कुछ को मनाने में हम सफल हो गए कुछ नहीं माने तो मुझे लगता है कि धीरे धीरे मान जाएंगे हमारा फोकस सीधा है नरेंद्र मोदी जी को ताकत देना हिमाचल मोदी जी के साथ खड़ा खड़ा करना और हिमाचल मोदी जी के साथ चलना और उसके साथ हिमाचल प्रदेश भारतीय जनता पार्टी की सरकार बनाना तो इसलिए जब लोगों का फोकस इस पर आ रहा है ध्यान आ रहा है तो इन सारी चीजों की ओर ध्यान अब जो है ध्यान ही नहीं जा रहा है But moving away from elections, let's just look at what's the real issue in North India, and that's the rising pollution. Today, in fact, the share of uh, fires of the fire pollution. Uh, the contributing of stubble burning contributing to delhi pollution has gone up to 30% now that means the blame game has begun the bjp saying delhi schools must be shut and saying that the aap government has no excuse because now they've got two aap chief ministers in delhi and punjab arvind kejriwal and bhagwant man hitting back saying that this is a north india problem and that if they have power in the other states they'll actually be able to solve it with arvind kejriwal asking the prime minister to call a meeting urgently <laughs> As Delhi chokes from the pollution, tourists from abroad say it's worse than they expected. I'd heard about this smog in Delhi, but I never knew that it was that bad. Right. And uh, it's even worse uh, this morning because now you can see it in the daylight. Doctors are reporting higher number of patients with respiratory problems, and pointing out the risk of more heart attacks as well, because of PM 2.5 levels. the microscopic and lethal pollutant which is 50 to 60 times more than the WHO's safe limits so there's a definite rise in the number of cases that we are seeing not only in the opd but also in the emergency and hospitalization that we're experiencing so diwali to now has only been a weeks times so i would say almost 10 to 15% rise in the number of cases that we're experiencing we need to realize that this is perhaps the biggest gas chamber in the world that we've created for every 10 increase and by the way 10 beyond 12 and we are at 300 is a 2.5% increase of the risk of heart attacks a 2.5% increase in the risk of admissions due to respiratory failure cardiac failures and perhaps 1% increase in death farm fires especially in punjab are rising smoke from these now at a season's high of 32% in delhi's air pollution As in the past six to seven years, a political blame game has begun. This time between AAP governments in Delhi as well as Punjab, and the BJP at the centre was neither able to stop these fires. Look, pollution is a problem. I am sure. And I have read you on my phone that the pollution is a problem in the whole northern India. It is being shown like this. It is not just the politics of Rajini. समाधान की कोई बात नहीं करना चाहता ऐसे दिखाया जा रहा है जैसे बस पंजाब और आम दिल्ली ने पोल्यूशन कर दिया सारे देश में बस पंजाब और दिल्ली की वजह से पोल्यूशन हो रहा है 
पंजाब सरकार अपने स्तर पे जो कर सकती है कर रही है केंद्र सरकार से आप लोग भी प्रश्न पूछिए With the falling air quality, the call for shutting schools is rising. The National Commission for Protection of Child Rights has issued a notice, and the BJP has written a letter to the Lieutenant Governor demanding Delhi schools be closed. Though the Delhi Environment Minister advised Delhiites to work from home, he said schools would be shut only if the air quality index rises beyond 450. but by then children will already have been exposed to hazardous air for several days for years the aam aadmi party government in delhi blamed the punjab government for stubble burning adding to delhi's pollution now that they're in power in both punjab and delhi they blame the center the political blame game continues while actual issues such as vehicular pollution are unaddressed and people have to breathe toxic air day in and day out In New Delhi with camera person Ashwini Mehra and Joseph Priyanshi Sharma for NDTV. Pollution in North India and extremely heavy rain in South India and Chennai. The rainfall in the last 24 hours was 666 percent above normal, and it's not just Chennai but other parts of Tamil Nadu as well. Sam Daniel reports. Pockets of Chennai inundated for the second day. Today it rained six times higher than the normal 15 millimeters. The Met has issued a heavy to very heavy rainfall warning. There's near knee deep water at Periyar Nagar in northern Chennai at Chief Minister M K Stalin's constituency. Water mixed with sewage has entered the home of Bhagwati. Many like her have shifted upstairs. or taken refuge in other homes we are very suffer with the heavy rain including the drainage water mixer then uh, some water rain water all the mixer all mixer here one of that way ella poiduchi fridge beiduchi grinder beiduchi cylinder la urundu ulundiruchi adanalai ipo ellame pudusu vaangi vechirukrom indha varsham ipdi thanni vandadna naanga polapu vaithu polapuk poradha illa Over the last 6 months the Chennai corporation had built 150 km long storm water drains costing about 700 crore rupees while this stopped inundation in several hot spots in the core city several pockets in the northern and southern parts collapsed bike la kadangala adhu yoru me sari padidhu aathimuga chela kadasu or 10 aandu kalamaga சென்னை மட்டும் இல்ல தமிழ்நாடே சீரழிச்சிட்டு போயிருக்காங்க அதெல்லாம் சரி பண்ணணும்னா ரொம்ப வருஷம் ஆகும் இருந்தாலும் நாங்க வந்து ஒன்றரை வருஷத்துக்குள்ளே முடிச்சிருவோம் நம்பிக்கை சென்னை கார்பரேஷன் சேஸ் இட்ஸ் ஒர்க்கிங் ஆன் லாங் டேர்ம் த்ரீ தௌசண்ட் குரோர் செவன் ஹண்ட்ரட் கிலோமீட்டர் லாங் ஸ்ட்ராங் வாட்டர் ட்ரைன்ஸ் ப்ராஜெக்ட் விச் வென் கம்ப்ளீட்டட் வில் அட்ரெஸ் இஷ்யூஸ் லைக் திஸ் இன் ஏரியாஸ் போத் இன் த நார்தன் அண்ட் சதர்ன் பார்ட்ஸ் ஆஃப் சென்னை Some top officials see such extreme weather events as a clear fallout of climate change. If, um, heavy rain days are increasing in the last few years. So definitely I feel that climate change does have an impact on many cities uh, and in cities like Chennai. Two people have died in rain related incidents so far and the Met has forecast moderate to heavy rainfall. over the next few days in chennai with suresh sam daniel find it tv a quick look at other news well a major u turn by edtech company byju's on mass sackings in tiruvananthapuram after the kerala government intervened byju's made a u turn on closing operations at the tiruvananthapuram center after a discussion with the kerala minister on mass layoffs at least 150 jobs were at stake the employees asked the kerala government to intervene saying they had been given no notice and didn't want to transfer to other cities and markets ended a four day winning streak today but still closing at over 60000 the sensex losing just 0.35% the nifty also down slightly closing at over 18000 The markets fell ahead of the US Fed's rate hike decisions. Markets ending in the red because of those mixed global cues. The rupee also weakened ending at 82 rupees 78 paise to the dollar. Meanwhile, the Reserve Bank of India will have a key meeting on inflation tomorrow, an additional monetary policy committee meeting. 
also they will be drafting a report looking at why inflation has been above their tolerance band consistently. The Indian economy has been growing steadily, drawing strength from its macroeconomic fundamentals and buffers. According to the IMF, India is slated to be one of the fastest growing major economies of the world in the current year as well as in the next year. We are closely monitoring the inflation trends as well as the effect of our past actions. But our constant endeavor is to keep an Arjuna's eye on inflation. International news, former Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu is on the brink of a dramatic comeback after partial results showed he's on course to win a majority in parliament with only with the far right's help. <laughs> Sad news now, as a pioneer of women's rights in India, the founder of Seva and famous Gandhian Ila Bhatt has died at 89 years old. Padma Bhushan Ila Bhatt was known as a gentle revolutionary. She is also the recipient in 2013 of the NDTV award for one of our greatest living Indians. for empowering women in villages with jobs, visibility and dignity. In every right, a living legend, Ila Bhatt. <laughs> 